So uh, what um, this is a very interesting uh, argument for Bayesian uh, inference. And um, so I'm, uh, I have a, a strong background in um, so th those, those things in terms of mathematical um, demonstration theorems and those things that, but uh, um, not very, very strong in, um, so when you use, uh, when you make the things in practice, so, um, I'm I'm improving my uh, learnings uh, about Bayesian practice, and, and um, so this this book is, is quite interesting because it's very clear. Uh, also, uh, I've searched on the internet for more um, resources, information, and I did a couple of other courses, many things. So this part of the conjugate families is. Um, very important, okay? Because when you do um, Bayesian analysis, uh, then you you have a prior, you have a likelihood, and you use these two um, uh, elements for uh, finding the posterior probability, which is, is something that is the thing that you aim to. Uh, um, so basically. It uh, forecasts uh, the outcomes that you are investigating. Uh, so today we have a look at the, those things, uh, um, those priors that are linked with their um, posterior, basically. So that there, that, that there's some you you when you make Bayesian analysis, you attempt to specify a prior. Then, uh, uh, as well as the likelihood, uh, you you most probably have the likelihood that you attempt to. Um, so the, many things can happen. So you can have a likelihood. You can have a prior. So basically, you, you somehow you attempt to establish a distribution for a prior um, and the likelihood to find your posterior distribution. So in this chapter, we, we practice a bit building Bayesian models and familiarize with conjugacy. Okay. Um, just to, if, if you are not very practiced with mathematical notation, so these are the notations that I, I uh, normally use. So those are parameters, uh, the, the, the best known parameters are the mean, the, the standard deviation. So, and then within the, the, the probability distributions, the diff, several different types of probability distributions, you might have the lambda or a tau or both of them or theta and so on. So I suggest you to uh, start, have a look at the, um, at the book. Okay. So, uh, what I wanted to do with this chapter, seeing that uh, we are talking about uh, uh, conjugate uh, priors, um, and I saw that uh, we had a nice uh, section, uh, which was uh, normal, normal, uh, conjugate family. So I, I uh, would like to uh, start from this, this bit here. Um, just to and then then maybe if we have time we have a look at other um, other type of distributions. Um, this is because um, when you, um, uh, as I said, attempt to um, um, set the prior. Okay, uh, there it is. Okay, so this is depend by the type of data that you are dealing with. Okay, so it might be possible that you um, uh, have, in the, as in the case of uh, uh, when, so let, let, let's go, um, just as in the case, um, 
uh, for example, here they have a case study that are investigating, and it is about uh, the um, average, so the, the volume of the uh, a specific part of the brain, which is the hippocampus. And uh, they, they, are, they like to investigate the, the, the average volume for, all the, for the adults, which have history um, of concussions. So like something that happened in football, for example. So basically what, what uh, so imagine that we've got this data uh, and we'd like to attempt to predict, uh, so identify what would be um, the, the, the average volume in cubic centimeters of the hippocampus when people has a back history of concussion, just as the same as football players, you know, as I said. So, um here uh so we focus on the mean value of this uh, um of our outcome so which is the volume uh, of the hippocampus in this case this this um um uh, outcome this type of outcome has a, a range which is possible so it cannot be zero cannot be one Okay, so definitely we, we are going to exclude some distributions which are uh, uh, um, um, which have a, a, a range that goes between zero and one. So we, we search for something that it's not it, it's more reasonable to our data. Uh, in this case, uh, the, the, here the, the, the author that does some some uh, more information provides some more information about the data and says um, the the volume can be between three and three point five centimeters uh, cube centimeters, and so in total the total hippocampal volume of both sides. This is. For, for one side, so both alves of the um, the alves, but uh, both sides of the brain, it's between six and seven centimeter uh, uh, cubed centimeter. So our uh, starting hypothesis are that the 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 average value, so our mu, uh, will be between six and seven, with an average value of 6.5. Let's imagine that we got 27 adults with back history of concussion. And so what do we do? So uh, we can go uh, within the data and have a look at the data because the, the um, they, they um, provide a football uh, data set to look at, uh, and which is related to this case study. And so we're supposed to have a null multiplier in this case. Okay, so why is that? Um, so this, this is a bit like, um, you know, if you do um, causal um, analysis, so you you, know, you might need to think about many things uh, that are related to 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 the outcome that you are investigating. But uh, so somehow there might be different distributions that might be suitable. Okay, but for now, seeing that we are not um, so. Based on our data, so which are continuous and are not included within zero and one, so are greater than one, so a, a certain type of data. So we can uh, like think about a normal distribution. Okay, so uh, let's uh, look. Uh, I load the uh, bias rule um, library, the tidyverse as well. And then let's have a look at this uh, football data set. Uh, so here 
uh, th there is a group variable which contains uh, um, uh, different type of uh, um, data uh, information, like a group which is control, then they have uh, uh, experience of conclusions, and then they have experience of no conclusion. Okay, so we have 25, let's focus on this field. So adults with back history of conclusion, 25 adults. Um, uh, what uh, we can uh, we can do with this um, with this data? Okay, these are the, the volume, and then I we have years, but so let, let's see that if I take uh an ascrit. No, this is not a good idea. Okay, Let, if I um, uh, like do this, because I want to do some practice of those things. So uh, I have a football, uh, this football that I said, okay. And just as I did it here, I select just the, um, uh, the 25 with conclusion. And then I do like ggplot. Um, uh, uh, so this is the data we are talking about, okay. So if we do, we have a look at the volume and then um, a geom density. So in a way that we can see uh, what is the uh, the density of um, uh, of our uh, distribution. So what how how it does look like? Mm. It's, it's it's quite you know that there's some uh, uh, tales, but uh, almost you know it might be uh, something that is growing on, on between six and seven. In fact, the, the, the average is, is between these two values, but almost, you know, like, look like norm. So we, we attempt to say that uh, we start with a normal distribution. And then uh, um, how do will you establish um the type of model why why I, I, I can use a normal normal because um i'm not uh like like if we um when we do vision analysis we do prior times likelihood to obtain the posterior okay so this is the prior the prior we are chapter five so we have some some back ground about those things and uh, so this is our distribution so we have a probability that something happened given something else has happened okay and um, so this something else that has already happened it's our prior and as a, its own distribution so like you know uh, I'm in, in this case, I, I am um, investigating the uh, average value, so the distribution of the volume uh, of the hippocampus. And uh, based on uh, conclusion, on back history of conclusion. So the probability of, have, of having a, a had a conclusion is in itself uh, uh, a distribution of probabilities, of, uh, okay? Uh, so we start from there, and then we, fr from that thing, we like to build up uh, our um, uh, probability, uh, like identify what would be the, 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 the distribution of the, um, the average value of the hippocampus. Uh, and so we have the probability, uh, the prior, and then we have the likelihood 
the likelihood is exactly the opposite. So the probability uh, to, to have a back history of conclusion given the average value of the uh, vo volume of the hippocamp. The, the, these two elements together, if you multiply these two elements together, these two type of distributions, these two distribution of probabilities, you find your posterior. Okay. So um, our, our, our starting point is this one here. So um, we have a mean uh, that uh, the, the volume of those ones that had concussion is 5.73. 74, while the standard deviation is about 0 0.5, 0 0.6 in this case. Okay, so um, what do we do is basically, uh, this is what I already done, is uh, um, plot with uh, using this function, normal likelihood, plot normal likelihood. Uh, so because we have established that our prior is normally distributed. So, okay. Uh, now we need to uh, um, establish the, the, the likelihood. Okay, so let's have a look at if if we plot the normal likelihood with the with the function, and we use the 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 vector uh, for of the volume and put the the value for sigma, we we have this this type of distribution which is uh, uh, which has a mean. Uh, it's about five point seven, and it is normally distributed. Uh, then uh, we can plot uh, our normal normal, and then what do we put inside? So this is uh, uh, the mean six um, six point five. This is the the the, the one of the uh, things that um, are provided at the very beginning of the uh, of this section normal normal. So we know that on average the uh, the volume is about 6.5 and uh, it's uh, standard deviation it's 0.4 okay so if we uh, use these two information that we are provided with and then add the sigma so the standard deviation for the football and the other um, mean value that we just found uh, on the football data set. And uh, uh, we set this on 25 odds. We can have a look at this uh, result. Okay, so here we have the prior. And, and these are the elements that yeah, we are provided with. And as well, we said that most probably it's normally distributed. And so use, using this um, other two um, parameters and said that our likelihood is uh, most probably normally distributed as well, uh, we obtain a posterior, okay? Posterior, which has the mean and the mode a mode, a variance, and a standard deviation. Okay. Obviously, um, okay, uh, this is a starting point. And we can think about this uh, um, for, for, for other for further analysis. Um, what uh, uh, I'd like to, to show you is that one, um, when you 
um, basically do those things you can use the function, but mathematically speaking, something happened inside the functions, okay? So um, you start with a normal distribution, which has, uh, um, uh, it's um, um, a formulation, okay? Uh, where is it? Okay. Uh, a normal distribution, and then uh, this uh, will be your prior. And then you have the likelihood as well, uh, which is proportional to, the, to, to, to this value here. Okay. Uh, and um, in the book, um, we, we can even have a look at the book, but if you have a look at the book, there are some uh, formulations, so mathematical formulation that leads you here. Uh, and uh, as you can see, to calculate the likelihood, you just plug in the value that you have just found. So this is your mean, uh, where is it? Uh, you can see this uh, here very clearly. So this is uh, uh, 5.7. So this is uh, this, this y hat that you uh, y bar that you have uh, uh, just found uh, in uh, in your um, football data set, and this is your uh, standard deviation. So if you plug in these values, you might be able to. Um, uh, uh, find um, a value that you can then mu multiply. That's what's happening in the function, inside the function. Multiply to your prior to obtain the posterior. Okay. So uh, this is when we use normal, normal. And this is because we have this type of data, so we use normal. Th there are other, let's uh, um, see if I can, uh, something else. Uh, uh, uh. So this is the book, for example, okay? So um, as you can see, I just, you know, grab something um, to, to show you something that I haven't, so you you basically have the, the posterior, which is proportional to the, the multiplication of the prior times the likelihood. And here, for example, they, they, they use a beta. So there might be reason to use the beta. You might be, have reason to use the Poisson. Um, uh, and this is when, you know, the, uh, there are some type of data that require you to um, to model um, with a Poisson. Otherwise, uh, you you can use a gamma, and so a gamma Poisson could you see. But just to uh, to let you understand what is um conjugacy family, is these things here. So it's a prior that is connected uh, with the posterior, passing through the likelihood. Uh, and they, there is like a sort of regulation rules because uh, uh, for, for potential priors. Um, so, uh, and um, for, for this reason, I found very, um, very interesting these two um, resources. I have it there. Uh, these two resources here. Okay. Um, Uh, okay, mm, this one, for example, uh, 
Um, I don't know if you can, uh, you should be able to see the, the YouTube. If you, uh, that, that's really, really helpful. Uh, most probably starts with some uh, uh, like spots or things like um, about marketing and everything. And there you go. Okay. But um, these are found, uh, this lady, very, very, this professor, very, very useful. As you can see, for example, she uh, shows uh, the, the, the mathematical um, um, steps to, in this case, she used a binomial likelihood. So, and this is a different case uh, because, because of your data, you need to think about your data. Uh, and so you start with a, some uh, distribution and then you might have, so she provides with, the, there's two uh, web uh, video uh, for two different distributions, um, uh, conjugate um, priors. Uh, so, here you can actually see what's happened uh, inside the formula. So why, when you do the multiplication and you release your posterior, how this posterior is actually related. So this case, for example, binomial, uh, the parameter, the mean para uh, parameter is included within zero and one. So you exclude somehow uh, those things when it depends by your data. Uh, another one, um, which is uh, another video, uh, which I found uh, interesting, uh, is, uh, is this one here. This is a, this Bayesian statistics. This is somehow telling you the story, uh, but um, and, and, and somehow it, it uh, it puts you inside to, to um, um, focalize on the different uh, uh, conjugate priors that you can use. But basically, uh, what uh, um, I like uh, about this video is um, this uh, um, this image uh, this image here I don't oh, okay I'll put it I think at the very beginning Uh, uh, there it is. So this is uh, um, what you really need to know. Okay. So we often choose convenient parametric form for our priors, such as the posterior remains manageable. And where the prior's parametric form is retaining to the, um, to the posterior, this is call, called a conjugate prior. So you have a likelihood, you have a prior. If one is normal, the other is normal. If one is binomial, the other is beta. If one is exponential, Poisson, the other is gamma. One is uniform, the other is parito, multinomial, Dirichlet. So basically, it depends by, you cannot use, you, you can even not use a conjugate prior. So you can use different things. It depends so phenomenon in the in the real world somehow some somehow uh sometimes are very unusual. So there are extreme events that might arise and happen and uh, then when you identify the post what is that uh, would have uh, an expression of your investigation already happened and you go back and have a look at the distribution, you might have found that there is nothing related with this. This is something that 
an extreme case can happen. So, but uh, um, this helps uh, when you do an analysis and you can you are able to identify your data, how they are distributed. It depends if you got a prior or if you got a likelihood, what type of data you get. You might use these uh, rules of the conjugate priors. Uh, and this is what is done usually out of extreme events. Uh, and so when you have a prior which is normal, you can use a likelihood normal or vice versa. Yeah. This is what I wanted to say. Um, I don't know if there's any questions maybe. Uh, no, I haven't thought of many questions, but I really like the resources that you brought in. I mean, beyond the book, the uniform Pareto conjugate prior is new information. So that is good to know. The book mentions that their models do not deal well with a flat um, distribution, a uniform distribution, but it's nice to know that there is something out there for that. Yeah. Um, basically, the um, uh, um, when you do those those Bayesian analysis, uh, how do you uh, see so you you always this is a question somehow. So you always need to to do a sort of caution investigation about your data for attempting assigning uh, a, a type of distribution, isn't it? So uh, why do you would you do a, a, a uniform and and you conjugate uh, this with a parito, for example? Um, so sometimes it's it's um, uh, it, it is not just um, 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 is it, is this is this a mathematical procedure when you multiply the formulations for uh, and then you find your posterior, but uh, for example, um, it's a it's a matter of uh, attempting. Um, identify some problems with some known this type of distributions, probability distributions. Um, I don't know if you uh, like to maybe uh, if you have more exp experience on the other type of distribution, like I don't know, like Poisson gamma or or beta uh, binomial. Yeah, the 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 uh, I see I saw that the other courts went through uh, those things um, for, for example this uh, gamma Poisson um, has been so for, for example if we uh, have a look at this uh, this situation uh, gamma Poisson. So um, I don't know if you like to add some uh, something about this, maybe. Um, so in this case, for example, we have a Poisson, and um, the Poisson has this type of distribution. So you have a tau. Uh, an exponential and everything, and which has its mean, uh, it, it, it's equal to its variance. So these are the characteristic of a Poisson distribution. And when you can apply this, is, is the Poisson, you apply the Poisson when you have rare uh, outcomes. So you very, uh, the, the, so, so very things that happen uh, not very often. And so you can count. The happenings, um, and they uh, 
have a look. So the, the author, for example, uh, you, you might study the type of different type of distribution. In this case, the Poisson uh, might assume different uh, shapes. Uh, if you specify, it depends by um, uh, the data. So you, in the case, you know, let's assume that we know about those things. And uh, so when we have uh, a Poisson as a prior, we might have a, a, a likelihood or vice versa. So a likelihood, which is a, a gamma. Okay, so this for this reason, we have a gamma Poisson. And uh, 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 this is, for example, the likelihood. It, it is the, the type of likelihood which is very well suited for uh, a Poisson distribution. So you can like conjugate uh, this type of likelihood. Um, um, it's just a sort of uh, mathematical uh, notations that like in uh, when when you do um, algebra uh, and you find like the piece of the puzzles that are more similar to each other so you can combine them and solve the multiplication easily so that's why you can combine normal with another normal or, or binomial um, or a gamma with a person uh, because they have elements that elite each other and so you can uh, like solve uh, the multiplication easily um, but for example when, when uh, there are potent potential priors that can be used when when we have a Poisson, we can use a gamma, a weeble, uh, or an F statistic, or an F distribution. Uh, as you can see, they all have the same, uh, they are adjustments of a baseline type of distribution. Uh, so for, for if you get, if you have a look at uh, at the uh, gamma distribution and you have a look at the weeble, for example, you can see that they are quite similar, but there is something that changes. And this this little change is an adjustment, uh, and it makes the distribution shape um, have have uh, a slightly different shape. Um, and so uh, that that was a quiz, you know. Uh, um, for example, if we have a look at the gamma and the exponential, okay. So we have this um, a, a gamma distribution as these two two parameter s and r. Uh, and the density uh, function is uh, done this way. So it has a mean, a mode, and a, va a variance of a certain type. Uh, for example, when the mean is equal to one, this uh, gamma uh, one r is then approximation, an approximation of an exponential with R as a parameter. So um, this is fascinating somehow, the fact that you can um, summarize um, an event with uh, mathematical uh, notations. So you can identify a trend uh, or a type of distribution, and then you can uh, summarize this 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 trend with mathematical notations. 
and then you can deal with that. Um, so, here uh, then that you can speculate and do many many things to understand the type of um, how these distributions behave uh, and for example when the mean is greater than the variance or the variance is greater than the mean the distribution in this case the gamma behaves differently um, And um, and so uh, even here, there's uh, the same application that we just did uh, with normal normal. So you can plot a gamma. So you know that these two are the parameters for a gamma. So you have a shape. Uh, so the S uh, and the rate. So you uh, can use those two value to have the um in the for for gamma the lambda is the is the mean so this is it but um you you can uh, use the function to plot um the uh, the distribution and see uh what is it? as as you can see is this this is normal this is not normal. This is in this case, this is gamma. So somehow is this is the difficulties that some some somehow arise. Um, but when you deal with data, you think about your data, the type of data that you got, uh, and then you do like you know, uh you, you do the density and see, and then you attempt a sign and distribution. It depends by the type of data. Um, and so this is all the steps, for example, for uh, plugging in the values of the parameters for gamma in the likelihood to calculate and then multiply the prior with the likelihood to obtain the posterior. And um, this is the nice plot. I, I like this plot from the Bayes rule uh, package, really like. So the posterior is always within the likelihood and the prior. So, uh, this is even a double check that you are doing right. So when you attempt assigning uh, a, a prior to a likelihood to obtain a posterior, then this if this is not within the two, you might uh, need to have a put look at the combination and see if you can do something different. So because this is one, this is what you want to achieve. So that your posterior is within the even visually. So this is help somehow. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look what else uh, we got in the uh, this is normal norm. So this is all I've got. Awesome. Thank you for the presentation, Federica. I, yeah, I agree that um, knowing a lot about the different distributions out there um, could really help. And the good advice that you gave about looking at your data and seeing what you have. I also appreciate how you went back and connected all the ideas with the distribution. I think we've all seen the graph that a lot of concepts in statistics are related to each other. So it is nice to see in this context that we could go from maybe the exponential distribution to the gamma distribution to the Weibull distribution. But as you saw in this chapter, um, perhaps people should 
use the gamma distribution because with the conjugate prior families, it's easier to understand and use at the moment. And yes, thank you for also bringing back the notion of the balance between that the posterior distribution is a balance between the prior and the likelihood. Um, did you have any more thoughts about this chapter? No, not for now. <laughs> and I guess for us, um, I'll pick things back up next week. Um, next chapter is a is about uh, approximating the posterior distribution, which I believe with the continuous posteriors, it's not always practical to model the whole thing. So we'll see um, what scientists have done in, in practice. Thank you. Okay, thank you, and we'll see you next week.